Good morning to one and all. Myself, Dr. Mahadev Unde, Professor in Electrical Engineering, Seal College of Engineering and Research, Pune. In a previous video lecture, we have learned the when the alternator is loaded, its terminal voltage falls, and the definition of the voltage regulation and the uh, how the voltage regulation uh, not only depends on the loading of the alternator, but it also depends on the power factor of the load. Now, in this video lecture, we are going to learn. the what are the methods of finding the voltage regulation and we will focus on the direct loading method of the finding the voltage regulation of the alternator now let us have what are the methods of finding the voltage regulation the first one is direct loading method and that is generally used for a small machines whereas the second is indirect loading method that is used for a large machines and these are the indirect methods are the synchronous impedance method or also known as emf method and it is also named called as ben isenberg method named after the scientist then the second method is the ampere turn method or mmf method that is also known as rutherford method and the third one is zero power factor or portier method is named as a name of the scientist portier now let us turn to the direct loading direct loading method now here the percentage voltage regulation once again the no load voltage per phase minus full load voltage per phase divided by full load voltage per phase multiplied by 100 now let us focus on voltage regulation of the alternator by direct loading method and that is generally used for a small machines at the end of this video i will tell you what is the reason once again here for the alternator there are the two main parts basic two main parts that is the stator and the rotor and on the stator the armature winding is placed and which is generally the star connected and here it is ryb is the armature winding that is star connected armature armature winding is shown here and the ammeter is connected in series with the line because it has a negligible resistance and it is always that's why it is always connected in series with the line whereas the whole meter is connected between the two lines two lines and that will read the line voltage and if the neutral point is available you can connect the whole meter between any line and neutral that is also possible now here it is a triple pole single throw switch and that is used to uh, connect the load to switch on the load and switch off the load and the load may be a three phase either star connected or delta connected okay then now turn to the rotor circuit generally the field winding is placed on the rotor the f1 f2 indicate the field winding and it is excited by the dc source as shown okay so here it is the dc source and here it is a double pole single throw switch is used now the variable rheostat is used in order to vary the field current now one can use the potential divider the rheostat as a potential divider also that is also possible and the ammeter is connected to measure the feed current now here as it is the dc supply the you must mention the polarity that is positive or negative and you can connect this ammeter either here from positive to the f1 that means in series any fair any fair in series and the range of this ammeter is generally very small because the feed current is small as compared to the armature current and generally it is 1 to 2 ampere for a laboratory machines now here as it is a dc we have to use the permanent magnet moving coil ammeter generally popularly known as moving coil ammeter whereas the armature the it is a alternating current and alternating voltage and that's why we have to use the moving ion instruments that is moving ion ammeter and moving ion voltmeter the ranges of these meters i will tell you later on okay so in this way we have made the connections of the stator winding and rotor winding now come to the prime mover now in the laboratory experiment generally prime mover used is the dc shunt motor because it is easier to adjust the speed okay now come to the next slide now uh, uh, let us see the procedure now make the connections as shown in the circuit diagram huh? keep the triple pole single throw switch open that is no load that is no load and connect the dc excitation connect the dc excitation to the field winding okay 
Now rotate the prime mover, rotate the prime mover at a synchronous speed. Rotate the prime mover at a synchronous speed and maintain the same speed. Now go on increasing the excitation, that is the feed current. And note down the so that you will get the rate a terminal voltage here. Rate a terminal voltage. Okay. Then close this switch. Close this load switch. That is the triple pole. That is triple pole single throw switch. That means connect the load to this armature winding and go on increasing the load step by step. Go on increasing the load step by step and simultaneously maintain the terminal voltage by adjusting the field excitation by adjusting the field excitation so that go on increasing the load step by step up to a rated value means this ammeter ammeter connected in the armature circuit will read the rated armature current the whole meter connected will read the rated terminal voltage and you have to maintain the speed say the synchronous speed and observe what is the field excitation. Now this is the full load. That means we have loaded the machine fully. Okay. Then switch off the load suddenly. Switch off the load suddenly means open this switch. There will be a rise in voltage. There will be rise in voltage but simultaneously remember that keep the speed of the machine that is the speed and the excitation constant as before that was in full load condition. Now the same thing and then observe this reading, hold meter reading. This will be the no load voltage. This will be the no load voltage. This will be the no load voltage minus full load voltage divided by full load voltage multiplied by 100 will give you a voltage regulation. Now observe here carefully the one by one the procedure. The almost procedure I have defined to you. The voltage regulation, the formula also Already we have uh, explained so many times. Now see the observations. Say let us consider the machine 3 phase, 3 kVA, 4 pole, 415 volt, 4.2 ampere star connected alternator. Now here itself it indicates, see, the rating of the machine is 3 kVA, it is 4 pole, means speed is 1500 rpm and it is a rated voltage, that is the line voltage is 415 volt. Remember that unless stated otherwise given values are always line values. So this is also a line, a line current. And for a star connection, line current equal to phase current. So you have to adjust in a star connected, in a armature connected hold meter. The hold meter which is connected in the armature circuit should read 415 volt at a full load voltage. That is during on load means see the first observation table for a on load means on load conditions okay and the current should be 4.2 ampere and when you obtain this one when you obtain this one that is full load that is the full load rated current 4.2 ampere and rated voltage line voltage that is 415 volt you can convert this divide it by root 3 you will get the rated per phase voltage that is 239.6 i have taken as an example it may be different and note down keep the feed current note down the reading of the feed current and speed when it is delivering the full load current and full load rated voltage and now switch off it that will be no load now when the load is switched off that is no load we have to maintain the feed current and the speed constant and by maintaining the feed current and the speed constant actually it is increased we have to maintain it as before the on load and now see what will be the load current obviously load current would be zero because the load is suddenly switched off and there will be a rise in voltage. There will be rise in voltage at no load. We have traced there in a previous video. I have shown it at lagging power factor what has happened. And now this is also at a certain desired power factor. Okay. It is not known to us now. Okay. Say this no load voltage here is 485 volts say. And therefore based on this the no load voltage per phase will be divided by root 3 that is 280 say. Then voltage regulation. The voltage regulation is given by E0 minus VPH upon VPH into 100 and therefore the voltage regulation is, what is the no load voltage? No load voltage is 280 per phase minus full load voltage 239.6 per phase divided by 239.6 multiplied by 100 that is 16.86 percent. This is the voltage regulation obtained by direct loading of the machine and that is generally used for a small machines. 
the question is why it is implemented only for a small machines and why not for a large machines the reason is for a small machines which we will conduct the experiment in the laboratory it is possible to adjust the small load and there will be a remember while conducting the test there is a huge amount of loss of energy now for a large machines the question is how to manage the load say if you consider the one mva machine mva alternator or i say 10 mva alternator the question is how to manage such a huge load and second is during the testing there will be a wastage of energy and power and that's why the this is such a large machines are never uh, tested by the direct loading the, they are tested by the another method called as the indirect methods and in the next video lecture we will study the indirect methods one by one we will stop here thank you thank you very much